Hi, I'm Jim Linnell with Tandy Leather. I'm going to be showing you how to make a wallet and I'll be going through each of the steps with each of the tools in enough detail so that you'll know how to get the best results out of your leather work. The next step in bringing our design to life is to do the beveling. Beveling is where we press down the leather on one side of the line and make the design stand out. So this is really one of the most important steps in, uh, in carving a des design, and at least in stamping it. And bevelers, they come in a lot of different sizes, um, from large to small, and you really need to have you know, something that goes from small, medium, even up to large like that. That's a good range of, of bevelers to have available. I like to use the ones with the checkered texture on them. They tend to come out a little bit smoother, but I'm going to show you some tricks that will help you get your, your beveling to come out nice and smooth. A beveler tool, when you look at it from the, the side, you can see that it is a bevel shape tool. It has one corner here that is longer than the others, and that's the side that actually does all of the work. Uh, when you're using the tool, you will always have that facing towards you. So if I was going to bevel this line, I would turn this so that the tool that I'm using is actually sitting in the, in the, in the cut and I'm looking right at the face of the tool. I'm going to turn this so you can see what I'm doing. But uh, being able to see what the face of this tool is doing is how you make sure you get good, clean beveling. And the, what we do is by tapping this tool and moving it along, we press down the leather on one side of the cut and it looks like that is raised up by, by pressing this down. If you've got good moisture content in your leather, if you've got it cased just right, you're going to get this real dark burnish. And as I mentioned earlier, that's what you want to look for on your photocar pattern is that dark burnish. That's going to indicate which side of the line you should be beveling. And that's one of the challenges for somebody first getting started is figure out, okay, which side of the line do I bevel? Um, so the technique of using this tool is real similar to using the pear shader in that you want to, again, have the grip so that you're gripping it down here close to the working end. You want to have a tight grip. You want to hold it so that you get that same jackhammer kind of a, of a action. You want to get that tool to kind of bounce along as you're, as you're moving it. That way it, you end up with a lot of overlap. And again, if you look at, at how far I move this tool each time I hit it, it's only moving maybe maybe a third or a fourth of the width of the tool. It's not the, the majority of the impressions are overlapping, but that's how you're able to do a nice smooth bevel job. Let me show you how it worked out when I was starting to get beveling. When I first started my beveling, I, I went along and I tried to slide it and move it, and it looked like somebody got their teeth into my leather. You could see every mark that I made, and there are several things that cause that. Number one is moving it too far. When you're beveling, you want to only move it just a little bit each time, and so that's where you want to learn this jackhammer thing. It makes it easy so that uh, it's ready to move along. Sometimes people will hold this tool and they, they're afraid it's going to, they'll have a death grip on it so that they're thinking it's going to get away from them. So when they hit it, they're pushing down and this now is sitting in a hole in the leather and so it doesn't want to slide. So the grip and having it just lightly touching the leather allows it to bounce along. And look at that. You actually can go back and clean this up. If you make a, a mess the first time over it, you can go back over it and smooth it up. One of the other things that will cause these bumps in between each impression is angling the tool. If you have had this tool angled, trying to push it along, scoot it along like that, you have the side of the tool making an impression. If you end up with this jagged look, again, you can, it's probably, look at your technique. Make sure that you're holding it straight up and down. When you're using the tool, you can lean it towards you just a little bit. You don't want to lean it back. If you lean it too far back, then you have the heel of the tool leaving a line on the back side of the row of impressions, and you don't want that either. You want these impressions to kind of fade out and disappear. So holding the tool for the most part straight up and down, letting it kind of bounce along like that. 
And one of the other important things about the beveler is to make sure you get it beveled deep enough. This is where you actually get the three dimension in your design. So when you're beveling, you want to bevel um, as deeply as you cut. So if you've cut this leather, say one third the thickness of the leather and you bevel to the bottom of the cut, then you're going to have this design standing out one third the thickness of your leather. As we start working on our design here, the first place I want to bevel is I want to bevel this border. One of the general rules of beveling is you want to bevel the um, items that are closest to you. And so since we have sort of like a frame around this, I want to make that frame stand out first. So I'm going to uh, would first start by beveling uh, around the uh, on the inside of this border, that kind of makes it look all like it's sitting inside of a frame. And getting some good depth, and here I've went to a, a wider tool, that's, that's what these long, larger tools get used for, is uh, um, uh, these long straight lines like this. But the technique, again, is still the same. You see I'm just kind of letting it bounce along, getting lots of overlap with those impressions. And uh, again, if we've got good moisture content in there, you're going to be getting this rich burnish in your leather as you use it. And this is how we start making it stand out. As we start beveling the inner part of the design, you want to use a beveler that um, is as large as you can use that does the job. And, and I guess what I mean by that is if you use a real small one, it's going to be real tedious uh, to, uh, to get all of this beveled. But you also have to have one that is small enough to accomplish the job. Don't try to make a large tool fit into a place that it just is too large to fit. And again, following that rule of working on the foremost part of the design, the, the part of it that's closest to you, on this flower that we have here in the corner, we have uh, lots of petals. They overlap each other, so one has to look like it's laying on top of the other. But we have three here in front that are kind of sticking out straight toward us. And so we're going to start with those because those are the ones that are kind of in front. The, the seeds and, and all of that is in behind that. One of the things you, you see me doing a lot is moving my leather. And the reason I'm moving my leather around so much is I want to make sure that I can see what the tool is doing. When you're uh, working on a project like this, you have to be able to see what your tool is doing. And so if, if the angle isn't right, get it turned so you can see what's going on. Half of the problems um, that people have with, with beveling is, is trying to guess where it goes. Uh, make sure that you're on the right side, make sure that you uh, are using uh, tools that will do the job as well. As we were cutting the uh, flower petals, you'll remember that we feathered out the cuts. Remember they started out fairly deep out at the, at the end of the flower petal and then as they came down toward the center of the flower, toward those seeds, they got lighter, 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 faded out and disappeared. Well, that's, that's how you want to bevel as well. Your beveling will start out its deepest on these flowers, will be out toward the end of the, the flower petals, but as you move toward the center of it, it'll lighten up, it'll gradually fade out and disappear. Every line that you initially cut into your leather, and you cut the design in, will have to be beveled against on one side or the other. So you have a lot of beveling to do. This will take you a little more time than some of the other steps. And if you have to re-moisten the leather in the middle of this, do it. But let it dry back to where it's at that just right stage before you um, actually start the beveling so you get the best results with it. As we get toward the end of our beveling, we need to, again, make sure we haven't missed anything. Um, there's still time to go back and clean up if some of it hasn't come out as smoothly as you would like it or you're not happy with the depth that you've gotten. You can go back and fix that at this time.
just to make sure that you uh, have uh, as much three dimension coming out of this as you can. There's a good, good time to go back and double check and make sure that you have gotten everything that you need to. If you're feathering out, didn't feather out as much as you wanted, you can come back and smooth that up. But this is a, a good time to do that double check. So if you're happy with it, the next steps that we will use are the ones that add some of the texture, the veiners, the cedars, and those, those things. So that, that's what will come next. Thank you for joining me today. Be sure and check back often here at our blog, and we'll show you more tips and ideas on how to get the most fun out of your leatherwork.